Well, uh, Dr. Muti, as you heard, is our uh, neonatologist, the only one in the Department of Pediatrics. Uh, he should have been here to present. He told me the cause. So I am Dr. Serio, ex head department, head of department, ex uh, manager of the Alipa University Hospital and four years to retire. I think the board perform is not convenient because we could not perform anything. This is, we are far from the performance, I mean. So Alipo City is known by, do you hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, the Alipo Citadel, is the symbol of Aleppo, very known in the center of the city. Aleppo is an ancient city and one of the oldest continuously inhabited cities in the world. It may have been inhabited since the sixth millennium about Jesus Christ. Religions, Islam and Christianism, the third religion was Jewish, and Jews, uh, Jewish people, I knew them when I were a kid. They left Aleppo uh, in the 1950s. Okay, now there are no more Jews in Aleppo. This is the Aleppo Food Stadium before war. Beautiful foot match matches were occurring. This is a report always. And it was the after war looks like this. A part of the city of Aleppo is completely destructed. Another part is partially destructed. Most had their parts, churches, well, uh, serious health services were generally well regarded in the region. Its universities were known to produce good doctors, relatively good and its factories met over 90% of the country drug needs and exported drugs to 50 other countries. This is real in the late 10 to 20 years only. This was. Patients could expect reasonable care, reasonable, and Syrian had a life expectancy of 76 years. This is official, I'm not sure if it is true or not. This is the government says, I don't know, I'm not sure. This is Syria, neighbor of Israel and Lebanon. Uh, so neonatal mortality rate is less than 15% per uh, 1,000 live births. Here either, I'm not sure that it is true because many uh, newborns with severe disease or severe malformations who die rapidly or stillbirth who die rapidly are not registered. So are not counted in the proportion. There are many. Okay. Healthcare in Syria during war 60% of hospitals and 38% of primary health facilities have been damaged or destroyed. That is true in the report. Production of drugs has fallen by 70% in a report. Half of Syria's doctors have fled the country 
I think in Aleppo is more than a half. Aleppo had three major hospitals <coughs> with NICU serving Aleppo and its countryside for free because all public hospitals are free. During the war, two hospitals, big hospitals, were destroyed at Kennedy University Hospital and Children's Hospital, which is the more recent hospital in Aleppo. This was uh, Al Kindi University Hospital, and this is how it became. And now it's uh, there is no more building. Now, like this, it's partially destroyed, but now there is no building at all. It is on the ground. This is our hospital, Aleppo University Hospital. And this is an old picture. Excuse me. Aleppo University Hospital has become the only large public hospital that receives, pa receives patients for free and therefore the pressure on it has been great, really very great. Three sick babies on every bed during war, as you see. This is real, this is true, because Photos are taken by us. Sometimes there are no more beds for the sick child. Now, there are private medicine and public medicine. Uh, University Hospital is a public uh, establishment. Private medicine in neonatology is the maternity. There are maternities, there are in Aleppo, there were uh, 13 maternities uh, with units for unit care, always. So in private hospitals, in these maternities, due to significant shortage of public medical centers for obstetrics and neonatology, patients are turning to private hospitals. There are currently only six, no more than six maternity and newborn private hospitals in Aleppo because many have been destroyed during the war. This is a maternity hospital. The photo is taken from my apartment, from my balcony because it's in front of our house. This is one. This is a second one, maternity hospital, where there is a, a unit for neonatal care. You will see how it goes. This is the third maternity hospital, destroyed, private to see, destroyed during war. Because it is private, it was rapidly renovated. This is the same. This one, this trail, and it is renovated. This is mother's room in a private maternity hospital. In general, all uh, matern mother rooms in maternity hospitals are luxe. The roots. <laughs> it's important for the mother to have, it's a very important occasion for the mother, as you'll see. You will see that there's no corner for baby care in any of the mother's rooms. In this private hospital, and uh, resuscitation corner after birth, this is it. The place of neonatal resuscitation in private hospital is usually small and poorly equipped. This how looks like our transport incubator. <laughs> the newborn is transported directly to the neonatal care room. 
with this not obligatory war okay skin to skin contact never done never and that's why there's no picture available <laughs> the newborns may stay for long hours away from their mothers this is to be dem demanded by the mothers and the families <coughs> they don't want him to stay long time beside the mother the nurse must, they must take care of him and the mother receives the guests and the family in general the nurses are in general are not cert certified, uncertified, no diploma. In general, but in the university hospital, all are certified. This is the bad corner in the hospital. Mm -hmm. This is the bad corner. And families demand bathing the newborn before dressing him mandatory so you uh, th he's taking his bath for giving a quick bath to the newborn under the tap the warm corner is not available is no more available in most hospitals during war you know because of there's no electricity NG tube is still used systematically to search uh, ET fistula, etc. So it is systematically because caregivers of neonates may not follow the recommendation of NRP, not update, updating. Suction is still electric and systematic. Aspiration devices are all and still routinely used for each birth central vacuum aspiration is not available weight is taken only once mm -hmm. after delivery every family asked uh, rapidly how much is the weight three kilograms oh very good that's all there's no everyday weight because discharge after a few hours that is recent in cases of normal delivery discharge may be in 24 to 48 hours maximum in cases of cesarean section in private hospitals or units of neurotology little care and big prices hospitalization in the private neonate section is very expensive without good follow-up this is the CPAP no more, no more used because there is no more current, uh, current okay handling is usually with bare hands as you see the hands of the nurse this is not strange, this is usual not astonishing the newborn may stay several hours or several days without a name so he has only <coughs> the name of his mother son of Fatima etc <laughs> clinical examination by a pediatrician the baby is rarely undressed now he, the baby is undressed, the newborn during examination. Examiner is not properly dressed. This is often. Often, both are undressed. Lamp and lead phototherapy or intensive phototherapy are available. Now, in public hospitals, <coughs> Alipa University Hospital, this is the hospital. The photo was taken from the car. 
because photos are forbidden because we are in war. <coughs> so it is still standing in the eighth floor. Here, the pediatric department. The eastern part and the western part, you will know why it's divided into two parts. Of course, as you see, as you saw, public hospitals are free of charge. The old pediatric department before the war, the eastern half, the old section of the department is very crowded <coughs> until now. This is the new pediatric department, western half. Despite the difficult circumstances, we started renovating the pediatric department and the renovation of the western section was completed. Don't be surprised because UNICEF ate, not only us. Concerning human resources, the number of doctors and nurses decreased significantly during war. Medical staff at the Department of Pediatrics at Alipo University Hospital included 13 or 14 pediatricians under various subspecialties in 210. 217, only five of them are left in the in the department, despite increases in the number of patients. Risks and difficult living conditions that we lived and still live in, relatively. Doctors, nurses, residents could arrive at the hospital, often, not sometimes, often risking their lives up to three or four months ago when the city was liberated. So, risking their lives on the way. What I'm going to say is true, really true. We witnessed some days in Aleppo in which we never knew if we could reach the hospital alive or see our families again. That was true during five to six years. This is the, these are the pediatricians of the pediatric department. You can recognize Dr. Muti, the only neonatologist, the uh, French diploma in neonatology. This is me. So these who are still me and this professor beside me, this uh, pediatric pediatrician, which is an expert in pediatric in neonatology, helps Dr. Muti. Dr. Muti and uh, hem uh, subspecialty in pediatric hematology. That's all. That's all. I can tell you that on general population, Christians uh, make eight to ten percent of Alepian population. So, from thirteen, this uh, this one is a guest. So, out of thirteen, five of the pediatrics are Christians and we live together, no problem, before war. Equipment and power are essential, and essential medications needed in neonatal care. These are the effects. Years without electricity. So only diesel generators serve for electricity. Years without water, only supplied from Aleppo ground wells by UNICEF. This is the car for UNICEF. Central oxygen is not always available. <coughs> Lack of essential medications because no airports uh, recently, there's an embargo severe economic crisis, people are unable to cover hospitalization fees, absence of surfactant, zero. There's no surfactant, not at all. 
very little antibiotics. Follow up of the pregnant mother and prenatal diagnosis. The answer is by a question. Do you imagine that it is possible to achieve this goal during war times? No, there is no more prenatal sweeping. Uh, stress, poverty, poor health, and malnutrition in pregnant women are all leading causes for prematurity and miscarriages. That is true. In 2011, 19% of mothers in Syria delivered via cesarean section by 213. This had more than doubled. Now it's much more. I think the war is the cause because uh, to uh, move from a a region to another region in the city is risky and very difficult and cannot be expected with a day. So, it's cesarean section. She, the mother cannot wait because there may be no way to go in the day home of her delivery. So, they ch choose a day, they choose a day and she has a delivery by cesarean section. In war, even Red Cross, Red Crescent, are sometimes helpless, not useless, helpless. Many ambulances were bombed and many volunteers were killed. The only way to transport uh, patients in the lack of roads, as you see, and ambulances and some re in some regions of Aleppo, which is destroyed. This is the NICU in the Aleppo University Hospital. Residents work hard with only one neonatologist that you saw and one pediatrician, the girl you saw, expert in the NICU. Continual medical education is still going on, once at least or twice per, uh, per year in the Aleppo University Hospital. <coughs> Updating. We have only 12, uh, 20 old and new incubators. Only recently we had some uh, electric warmers from Sweden. Relatively all five ventilators available. Only five. <coughs> and two CPAPs. <coughs> and surely we need more. CPAP is available. CPAP may help in the absence of surfactant. Monitors are available. Pediatric surgery is available. Oxygen box. Hand meat. When no ventilators and CPAP are available, we are forced to use free oxygen, mask or box, for severe, mem uh, even for severe RDS. Blinder is not available till now. Oxygen by mask. You see, you can see that the mask is longer than the face of the newborn. This is Dr. Muti. It's him who uh, performed uh, transmontanellar echography or ultrasound. Uh, sometimes there is no CT scan. And uh, two or three years ago, there, were, uh, there are no more MRI. Just up till now. Submarines, we call them submarines. Intensive phototherapy are available. Standard lab and recently led uh, phototherapy. Local mask 
had been during phototherapy. It's not black, it's like this. Central line is not available, not at all, in our department. Because it's very expensive, because of the lack of an exp of expert hands for catalyzation, because of lack of aseptic condition to put it. No umbilical catheter, so feeding tube is used to the umbilical vein. Uh, Rarely umbilical line, more than three years. No, excuse me, three days. Preparation for exchange transfusion. Set of exchange transfusion is not available because it's very, very expensive for us. Preparing, preparation for exchange transfusion is by local equipment. This is the way how we fix the newborn for exchange transfusion. From both four members. Because of shortage of four way, we use two, three way together. So we have a four way for blood exchange transfusion. This is during extangular uh, blood exchange transfusion. And now I want you, I just want to show you an accident. And it will be for that happened in the department. Concerned a, new, concerned a newborn, seven days old. You see the, the the nurse, the first thing she did is to hurry up to the incubator to close the windows, not to save the baby. <laughs> Thank you, that was all.